Hi everyone, welcome to week 30 for Matthew's Movie Mentions. So this is everything up to the 30th of July. This week I have watched Rashomon, Hackers, The King of Comedy, The Shanghai Job or SMART Chase, Frida, Chicago, Much Ado About Nothing, Ingrid Goes West and Extinction. So we kick off with Rashomon, uh, another classic that I knew a lot about but that I'd never seen. Um, and everything you hear about its quality, you, it just drips off this film. It is exquisite. The delivery of the story is very, very clever. Um, it's an example of this style of delivery being done very well. It, one of the first times it was done, um, certainly in this sort of large fashion across a whole film with multiple uh, multiple deliveries. Uh, the performances, the way the performances change through each of the different viewpoints, it really helps sells it. And then the film leaves you not knowing what happened. So, oh, that elevates it. I love that sort of ending. Hackers uh, is another one that we're covering on Pop Culturally Deprived. The film is about as 90s as Top Gun is an 80s film a couple of weeks ago. Um, it's incredibly enjoyable and fun, although it's not necessarily good. Um, a good conversation, though. I, I think you'll all enjoy that one a lot. The King of Comedy um, is buried on Amazon Prime's video lists. So I was surprised when I was just digging through and just swiping through one day um, and I came across it. I'm very pleased I've seen it now. The film gives a lot to think about, um, especially when you juxtapose the fact it's got some very, very dark t content, not too dissimilar from Taxi Driver, but it's delivered in a very light way. It's very interesting. Uh, the Shanghai Job is also called SMART Chase. Um, I don't know why they feel the need for the uh, full stops between each of the letters. Uh, it's not recommended. The producers, I think, clearly wanted Jason Statham. And when they could only get Orlando Bloom, insisted he put on his accent and pretend to be him throughout. There is a lot of product placement. Shanghai is made to look very beautiful. And the film doesn't have anything of any quality outside of that. Um, I, I, I will say that there were no guns in it, and it was commented on by the friend that we were watching this with that no one seemed to have any guns. And then a gun turns up at the end, and the gun had power because we hadn't seen them taking on a lot to do with guns earlier. Suddenly introducing one is like, oh, now it's gotten serious. So, so that was done very well. The rest less so. Um, Frida, uh, on the back of a bad film into a surprisingly great one. I, I'd been interested in this film anyway, but then there were lots of references or, or mentions of Frida throughout the year or recent months that made me go, okay, I, I think I actually want to see this film and, and see more about her. Um, and, and it's an outstanding biopic. It is colourful. It's visually astounding. The performances are dramatic and intense. Um, and it is a great tale of, of a life. It told very succinctly. You get a lot of detail about everything she went through and, and all of her, um, the events of her life. Yeah, really good. Chicago is another musical that I felt I should watch, and I will admit to being disappointed on this one. The style around this is always supposed to be gin joints and sleazy, saucy goings on, but it's actually quite tame compared to what seems to be implied about it. Uh, I can see there are ways of doing it very, very well, but I think the film does not do those things as well because it's got the big budget, because it's got multiple sets. I, I think actually seeing it on stage would work better than where we saw here. Two of the leads are not cast very well, both Renny Zellweger and uh, Richard Gere. I, I do not think do a good job. And, and the film does not leverage its best songs. The The... Uh, there are not reprises of things like all that jazz. Um, the lyrics don't then follow up, and and you could do some interesting plays on the words and and the lyrics, and just it never comes. So it never quite comes together for me. Much to do about nothing. So this is the nineteen ninety three Kenneth Branagh version. Um, and in pre preparation for pop culture deprived, I wanted to watch this so I could compare it to the twenty eleven David Tennant and Catherine Tate version that we were discussing. This is it's just it's a terrific adaptation of Shakespeare. So many of the roles are done so well by magnificent actors. Keanu Reeves is not as strong, but also the part is not easy to play. It's fairly weak in the way it's generally portrayed. So in, in the way they set him, they, they always keep him apart and give him his own scenes. I, I feel like we should see him more throughout the play. But the leads are great. The emotion that Emma Thompson particularly brings to it, she's absolutely superb. Her, her whole bit of, I would eat his heart, that is such a, a good, strong moment. Ingrid Goes West sounded interesting, and I think I'm finding that films on Sky, they're very good at film blurbs. 
um, being more interesting than the films themselves. It was not as funny as it wanted to be. The better characters were treated very poorly. And, and the ending could have taken you to a place that delivers something a little bit haunting, a bit of a deep message, but it didn't really come across because they never really discussed the sort of evils of social media addiction. Um, and we just ended up with this, oh, and she still gets validation through it. Okay. Uh, Extinction was a Netflix recommendation that sounded right up my street, alien invasion and big sci-fi action. Um, and the action is very well done. The film has a, a really good tension throughout. It's, it's, it's really nice. Um, but the film is surprisingly ordinary. Otherwise, there's a reveal probably about three quarters of the way through that would be interesting or could be interesting in the hands of an Asimov or Philip K. Dick. But... It doesn't do anything to the plot. It doesn't impact the characters. It's just a reveal about them. And it doesn't... It, it only helps us understand one bit about the, the visions the main characters have been having. It doesn't really change anything that has gone on so far. So, altogether, it's a largely forgettable film. So, Frida is definitely the recommendation this week. Uh, it was magnificent. Every performance in the film was superb. The cinematography, the visual effects, and the overall style of it, it was just a treat of a film to watch. So, it's on Amazon Prime. It is one to check out as soon as possible. So, next week, week 31, we're into August, um, and I'm coming up on two-thirds of the way through. So, rattling through them now, um, and I've got some really interesting podcasts coming up. Some films I've seen, some films I've not seen in quite a while. So, it's going to be an interesting period uh, of, of the movies I get to watch. So, I'll see speak to you all next week. <laughs>